we speak, we write, we do language. Hello, my name is Emily Fridland. Today I'm going to read a short passage from my novel in progress, Little House. In this book, a father is raising his three-year-old child in the aftermath of his wife's death. Better, he said to her, tying up her drawstring. And it did seem almost better for a moment. But maybe he hesitated down there on his knees a little too long. Maybe his thoughts pitched, Tess mouthing threats again, saying, everything is shit. Because R put her hot hand in his like she meant to lead him somewhere. Or lead him back. Dada, she said. Oh, the unbearable gentleness of children, he thought. Let's do a house, okay, she said. And their unbearable rigidity, like machines. Because she meant drape a sheet over the kitchen table. She meant overturn a chair and wedge two pillows inside. Or prop up a ratty rug with a broom so she could crawl in under. It had been her one obsession since Tess died, building houses, building houses inside houses. She meant, let's make a little cave for my body. Let's build something just big enough and small enough at once that only I can fit inside. Not forts, not castles, just these austere, artless, partial structures made from piled up cushions and old stools and kitchen chairs, anything overturned. She built them, crawled inside, and came right out again. There was no playing involved. She meant, she means, let's make a mess. Not right now, he said, standing up, too exhausted by the thought of having to put everything back. But then, a little while later, he found her flat on her back under Tessa's old exercise bike in the bathroom. She'd balanced the bath mat on the seat and opened up a big coffee table book over one handlebar, a roof. Later still, she dumped out the laundry basket and crouched down low inside its plastic mouth, and then, dissatisfied, clambered out and wormed in under the pile of dirty clothes on the floor, shoring up a house of pants. Before dark, they went outside to play, and she lay down in the most overgrown part of the garden. He cleaned her up, got her to bed. She was three and a half years old. She would have, he understood, either few or no lasting memories of her mother. He took a beer from the fridge, went outside to cry alone, then came back in and found her sitting, legs out, on the kitchen tile in just her pajama bottoms. Whoa, she said as he approached. You have to knock. Um, he said. On what? He wondered. On what? She was sitting in the very center of the empty room. You know, went her look. On her own little body, he thought, or maybe the opposite. Maybe she meant the thin layer of air just around her. The summer night, her house, of course, this one here, the great and unbearable world. <laughs>